Hi everyone, this is Hel Tasaki. Welcome to part one of my two-part lecture on symmetry protected topological phases and topological indices in quantum spin chains. Uh, this lecture is an extended version of the talk that I gave, gave in this uh, recent conference, which was held in a beautiful hotel in Switzerland. So now actually I'm here in this hotel, although virtually. And although based on this conference talk, this part one is very elementary. So I only assume basic knowledge in quantum spins and you will learn what you will learn what SPD phases are. But if you are still, uh, if you are looking for an elementary textbook, uh, introductory textbook, which describes this kind of topic, then I would recommend, I would strongly recommend you to read my book, which was published like one year ago. And I think it's well written. Okay, so let's go into the seminar room of the hotel and you see my screen, but it's small. So let me make it bigger. Now you see it. So in this part one, I start from Haldane conjecture and tell you what SPT phases are. I start by discussing ground states of very simple model, models that consist only of two spins. I start from classical spin, which is just a vector of fixed size. And this is the energy for ferromagnetic interaction. It's simply minus the inner product. And I want to, to get a ground state, I want to minimize this energy. So I want to maximize this inner product. Then uh, you simply want the two spins to align with each other, point to the same direction, okay? And now you can rotate this configuration in an arbitrary manner to get many other ground states. So in this case, uh, there are infinitely many ground states. The situation is more or less the same for antiferromagnetic interaction. Now you have S dot S without minus sign. And in this case, to minimize the energy, you want two spins to point in the opposite directions. Again, you have infinitely many ground states. Quantum spin is a vector that consists of three operators like this, and they satisfy this familiar commutation relation. S squared is S times S plus one, where S is the spin quantum number. Okay, let's set S equal one half and look at this very simple example. Uh, this is a ferromagnetic Hamiltonian for two spins, uh, the same form, but this, this is now an operator. And now I want to see the ground state of this Hamiltonian. It's well known that the ground state is given by the triplet, spin triplets. And so the ground states are threefold degenerate. And also you can take any linear combination of these three states. So uh, there are infinitely many ground states again. Now I consider antiferromagnetic interaction given by this. Now, in this case, you find that the ground state is given by the spin singlet, which is the uh, state with vanishing total spin. And you know, this is, an, this is a rotationally invariant state. If you rotate this state, uh, you only get a phase factor and nothing changes. So only in this case, uh, the ground state is unique and rotationally invariant. So if you compare these four examples, you will see that this quantum antiferromagnet is special and kind of inter interesting. So uh, we should say that we expect strong and interesting quantum effects in antiferromagnets. Okay, so that was the introduction. So let me go to the first part. And so I will want to consider a quantum antiferromagnetic system and it's called, and this is a model called Heisenberg model. And the chain, Heisenberg chain, chain means one dimensional system. So this is one of the most standard models of quantum many body systems. So you have this chain, one dimensional lattice, and on each side, you have a quantum spin described by this SJ operator. And Hamiltonian is again, the same antiferromagnetic Hamiltonian, uh, but now in this case, uh, I sum over all nearest neighbor pairs. Uh, L is the number of sites, okay. And uh, the only parameter of this model is the spin quantum number S, which can be one half, one, three halves, dot, dot, dot. And uh, we ask what are the ground state and low energy excitations of this model. And before going on, uh, let me mention that even though this is an antiferromagnetic system, the nail state in which spins point in the opposite directions like this is not a ground state. It's not even an energy eigenstate. 
So we might say that quantum fluctuation is strong in this system. So uh, in the case of simplest uh, model with spin one half, uh, there is a very famous method called the Bet Ansatz, uh, invented by Hans Bet back in 1931. And with this method, we understand a lot about ground state and low energy properties of this model. Uh, so we know that the ground state is unique and there is no energy gap above the ground state energy. So the spectrum is like this. If you, if you actually magnify this, you see uh, level spacing, which is of order one over L, but if you let L larger and larger, this becomes smaller and smaller, and this becomes essentially continuous. And it is also known that the ground state correlation function decays with power law like this. Uh, you can forget about this log. This is a minor correction. And the main part is this, one over the distance between two sides. And this is the oscillating factor, okay? So with this power law, uh, we can say that the ground state is critical in this case. So this is 1931. Uh, 50 years later, Duncan Haldane made a very interesting discovery, which brought him the 2016 Nobel Prize in Physics. He argued that there is a qualitative difference in low energy properties of this model with half of the integer spin, S, one half, three halves, and integer spin, S equal one to three. So half of the integer spin, uh, this is exactly the same as spin one half. So I just copied and pasted. it. Our ground state is unique, no energy gap, correlation decays with power low. But if it is an integer, then changes. Uh, one is the same, ground state is unique, but then there is a non-zero energy gap immediately above the ground state energy. And also the ground state correlation function decays exponentially very rapidly, like in very high temperature. Okay. So uh, this energy gap is now called the Haldane gap. So you have a unique ground state and there is a gap above it. And so in short, he argued that for integer spin, you have a unique gap ground state without any order. And in this lecture, I will repeatedly use this phrase, unique gap ground state. To be precise, this means a unique ground state accompanied by a non-zero energy gap immediately above the ground state energy. Okay. Now, um, this result, this conclusion of Haldane's was rather surprising, especially in early 80s. Uh, the first big surprise is that he said there is a qualitative difference between models with half of the integer spin and integer spins. This is very strange. You know, if somebody comes and say that there is a critical value of spin, like say the critical value is five, and if spin is larger than five, something happened. And if spin is less than five, something different happens, then it's a it's something like usual phase transition. But he said that there is a qualitative difference between half of the integer and integer. This is very strange. And also, uh, I'm not going to discuss this, but there is the very famous, there is a very famous theorem called the Leap Schultz Matisse theorem. And, and according to this theorem, people believed that it is natural, people believed in early 80s that it is natural that a system with continuous symmetry and unique, gap, unique ground state is gapless, okay? And finally, uh, Haldane argued that the unique gap ground state of integer spin chains are disordered, like in high temperature states, but this is, this is zero temperature, the ground state. So you, can, you don't have any thermal fluctuation. So this disorder should come from quantum fluctuation, in quote. But can quantum fluctuation be that strong? So um, I hear that many people didn't believe in Haldane's conclusion. And actually, Haldane wrote first paper in 1981, and he discussed these conclusions. Uh, but the, re the referee said, this is a manifest contradiction to fundamental principle of physics and the paper was rejected and was never published. Very interesting. But after this, uh, there appeared many evidences that Haldane, Haldane was correct. And now everybody believes in what Haldane said. And one of such evidences is a rigorous example for spin one chain. So consider anti-ferromagnetic Hamiltonian, uh, 
with an extra term like this. So without this, this is a Heisenberg antifermagnet, but you have this extra term. And, and then in this case, uh, it was proved that the ground state is unique and there is non-zero non energy gap above the ground state energy and the ground state correlation, uh, this VVS is the uh, exact ground state of this model. By the way, this model is called the AKLT model for some reason, but anyway, uh, in this exact ground state, uh, the correlation decays exponentially. So in short, all the conclusions by Haldane for integer spin chains are verified rigorously, not for the Heisenberg antiferromagnet. It's still a conjecture from mathematical point of view, but this, it was proved for this related model. Okay, so how, how, how do we prove such, how do you prove such a theorem? Uh, the starting point of the proof is the observation that you can rather easily write down the exact ground state of this Hamiltonian. The exact ground state is called the VVS state or the balance bond solid state. And what does it mean? Well, uh, here's the graphic representation of this VVS state. Let me explain. Uh, first of all, this dot, black dot, represents a spin one half. And two black dots connected by a line represents a spin singlet formed by two spin one halves, okay? But I said, this is model for spin one and this is spin one, one half. So you have to do something and this something is this uh, dotted oval. So this represents symmetrization of two spin one halves. So uh, suppose that this sigma and sigma prime are, the, are states of spin one half. So sigma, sigma prime can be either up or down. And whatever sigma and sigma prime are, this thing, the symmetrization of the two states uh, is one of the triplets, one of the spin triplets. So has spin one. Okay, so this thing, this is a single site. It has spin one. And this has spin one, this has spin one. And so we, in this way, we get a state of spin one chain. Okay, and this is not a trivial state. Okay, first of all, uh, it consists of spin singlets. And in, if you look this spin singlet in terms of spin configurations, uh, it's a superposition of up, down, and down, up. So in a sense, this contains quantum fluctuation to begin with. But without this dotted circle, this is just a simple tensor product of spin singlets and nothing, nothing interesting happens, but we have this symmetrization. So this symmetrization uh, induces antiferromagnetic correlations and we get a non-trivial state. Okay, so the BBS state looks very simple in this graphic representation, but you might want to represent this in the standard basis, okay? Like, in, like what you do in usual quantum mechanics. And that kind of representation in the standard basis can be obtained in many ways, but this is a very clever way uh, found by Fannis Nachtel Gelwerner. I'm sure that my pronunciation is wrong, uh, back in 1989. It's called matrix product representation, okay? So this is a BVS state, and here uh, is the standard representation in the standard basis states. So this sigma uh, denotes the eigenvalue of the local SZ operator, uh, spin operator in the Z direction. So since we're considering spin one, uh, the, con the eigenvalue of SZ is either zero or plus minus one, okay? And so this represents uh, the, the eigenvalue of SZ for each side. So this is the standard basis state. And you sum over all the spin configurations and here is the coefficient, okay? And their observation, their, their finding is that you can write rather complicated coefficient in a very clever manner like this. What is this? Well, here M, you have M, this is a matrix indexed by sigma. Sigma take can be zero or plus minus. So this, this means that there are three matrices like this, M plus, M zero, M minus. What do you do is if you have a spin configuration, then you consider that the corresponding product of matrices by just plugging in, plugging in uh, this M plus, M zero, M minus. And then you take product and then you take trace, then you get a number. Uh, that represents the desired coefficient, okay? So it's a very clever way of writing coefficient by using these two by two matrices, okay? And 
of course, this consideration can be generalized. And actually this generalization is more important this than, than this specific example. So uh, this is a special case of a general class of states called matrix product states. I'm sure that you have heard about this and it's called MPS. And this is a general form of MPS. Now I'm considering general spin S system. This is a standard basis state and this is the coefficient. It's the same as above, but M can be anything. It's, it's, it need not be two by two. It's some general D by D matrix, D by D matrices. And by, by this expression, you can express many, many states, but surprising and amazing fact is that uh, any unique gapped ground state of a quantum spin chain with translation invariance is very accurately approximated by MPS. So I will come back to MPS in part two. So this is just a brief introduction to matrix product states. Okay, so finally, I'd like to, uh, discuss exotic properties of this AKLT model. So this is a Hamiltonian, and I said that we have the exact ground state that is the VVS state. And if we express this VVS state using the standard basis states like I did in the previous slide, uh, you get some of bunch of basis states and you get many, many configurations, but actually there is a very strong restriction on possible uh, spin configuration that you observe. So this is one of them. Well, it looks like random configuration, but no. If you delete all these zero from this configuration string, you get this. So you have a perfectly alternating sequence of plus and minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. This is the restriction. You can have many, you can have any number of zero anywhere you want, but if you delete zeros, you must get this alternating sequence of plus and minus. This is called hidden antiferromagnetic order. You know, this is plus minus plus minus. It's antiferromagnetic order, but it's hidden by these insertions of zero. You can never observe this experimentally. Uh, this is exotic property number one. Exotic property number two is this one. So we have been considering only uh, spin chains with periodic boundary condition or infinite ones. But if you consider finite chain with open boundary conditions, then uh, you find that the ground state is no longer unique. And actually the ground states are full, full degenerate. Why? Well, uh, this is graphically understood from this picture. So here you have uh, two spin one halves and you symmetrize to get spin one. And here you have valence bonds, singlet pairs. But on these two boundaries, uh, they, they, don't, they cannot join in any singlet pair. So they are, they are left sort of free. And like this picture, as this graphic representation suggests, uh, you get almost free spin one halves at two edges of the spin chains. Of, of open chains. And rather surprisingly, this uh, sp effective spin one half degrees of freedom appearing at the edge are observed experimentally in some spin chains, which are very close to uh, uh, antiferromagnetic Heisenberg chain. And so uh, nowadays it's understood that, these, understood that these exotic properties are universal properties of the Haldane phase. Okay, so now let's go to the second part and I'm discuss topological phase transition. To motivate topological phase transition, I consider two spin one chains with a unique gap ground state. One, the first one is the AKLT model that we have been discussing. So this is the Hamiltonian, this is the exact ground state. And we, we, we have seen that this has, this has some exotic properties. But if you only want a unique gap ground state, then you can easily find a very easy trivial model that has a unique gap ground state. For example, uh, this is a trivial Hamiltonian, which I call H trivial. And this is simply, the Hamiltonian is simply the sum of SZ operators, local spin operators in the Z direction. And this is spin one system. So SZ, uh, the eigenvalue of SZ is, is, is zero or plus, or plus one or minus one. And I have SZ squared, so to lower the energy, you want to have this. The ground state is trivially the tensor product of all these zeros, and the ground state energy is zero. And this has a unique gap ground state. 
So both models have a unique gap ground state, but as I discussed, this looks non-trivial and this has exotic properties. This is very, very trivial. So here's a natural question, are the two models connected smoothly? Uh, so to investigate this, uh, I will look at property of a model which interpolates these two models. So here's the simplest interpolation, the linear interpolation of two models. Uh, S runs between zero and one. So when S equals zero, uh, this is just a trivial Hamiltonian. When S equals one, this is the AKLT Hamiltonian. So note that this HS has a unique gap ground state when S equals zero or one. Here's a numerical plot of the energy gap of this Hamiltonian HS, and this is S. And actually a numerical calculation was done by my friend Hosho Katsura. Uh, he did this by using Mathematica. So this must be easy for him and to most of you, not to me, but anyway, uh, probably you can do it. And looking at this numerical result, you clearly see that the gap goes down and it's almost zero and it goes up again. Here you have trivial gap of this trivial system. And here you have the Haldane gap for this AKLT Hamiltonian. Here, it looks like there is a gapless point and there is a phase transition at intermediate S. But uh, we should note that for S equals zero and one, the ground state is unique and breaks no symmetry. Recall that usually a phase transition is characterized by the presence or absence of some symmetry, okay? Uh, but in this case, uh, no symmetry breaking here, no symmetry breaking here. So it is very likely that in this phase transition, you have a phase with a unique gap ground state and no phase, no symmetry breaking, and also another phase with a unique gap ground state and no symmetry breaking. So this is an exotic phase transition. This is a topological phase transition in the sense that it cannot be characterized by symmetry breaking. Okay. Uh, let me also note that the existence of such a topological phase transition had been conjectured for quite a long time. And I think one of many who conjectured the existence of this phase transition. Uh, but, the, but the mathematical proof of the existence of phase transition was, was given only in 2018, rather recently, actually by myself. And this is, I would say, a very clever uh, proof, and I liked it very much. But unfortunately, or I must say fortunately, uh, soon after my work, Yoshiko Ogata came up with a beautiful, almost perfect theory of symmetry protected topological phase. And from her theorem, uh, we see that we get a proof that the uh, phase transition exists. Uh, so I, I'm going to talk, I'm, I will discuss about, discuss this Ogata's result in part two of this lecture. So this means that you can safely forget about my result. Okay. So in order to discuss this kind of uh, phase transition, I will introduce a notion of smooth connection of two models. So here's the definition. Uh, I say that two Hamiltonians or two models described by two Hamiltonians, H0 and H1, are said to be uh, are smoothly connected if there exists a family HS where S runs between zero and one uh, of Hamiltonians and HS has a unique gapped ground state for each S and also the ground state depends smoothly on S. So here's, a, here's the rough picture. Uh, here we have a space of all Hamiltonians and here's H0 and H1. And here we have region where we have unique gap ground state. But here we have uh, models with mult multiple ground states, multiple ground state. Uh, here you have models with gapless ground states. And uh, if you can go from here to here without passing through this region or this region, then we say that they are smoothly connected. Okay, so what about our examples of HAKLT and H trivial? Here's the general picture given by Gu Wen and Chen Gu Wen in 2011. According to them, if any short ranged Hamiltonian is allowed, uh, actually then H A K L T and H trivial can be smoothly connected with each other. This is rather surprising and a bit disappointing because we have seen that HAKLT looks non-trivial. It has exotic properties. It's related to the Haldane gap. 
And but H trivial was very, very trivial. But according to this result, uh, for example, the Haldane gap in AKLT is sort of smoothly connected uh, to continuously connected to the trivial gap in this Hamiltonian. And this was a conjecture in 2011, but now we know it rigorously. So Bachmann, Nachtegel in 2014, Ogata in 2017 gave rigorous proofs of this. So this is the fact, a bit disappointing, but this is not yet the end of the story. Uh, Gu and Wen also argued that uh, if only Hamiltonians with certain symmetry are allowed, I will be more specific about symmetry, then these two Hamiltonians can never be smoothly connected with each other. Here's the rough picture. Here's HAKLT Hamiltonian and trivial Hamiltonian. And suppose that this whole space represents uh, the space of all short range Hamiltonians. And then in this case, you can go from AKLT point to trivial point like this. Actually, the path was constructed by bachmann nachtegel And you can go from here to here without passing through any singularities. But uh, then suppose that this plane here corresponds to the space of Hamiltonians with some nice symmetry. In this case, no matter what you do, to go from here to here, you must, you must go through some singularity. Like here, if you go like this, you, you pass singularity here. If you go like this, you pass here and so on. Okay, so in other words, you, there must be a ground state phase transition between here and here. You must go through a phase, a singular point, a phase transition. And also uh, you get a phase because uh, this point and this point is always uh, separated by this phase transition. So there is a notion of phase. And this phase appearing here is called asymmetry protected topological phase. Why? I say topological because this phase is not characterized by usual symmetry breaking. No broken symmetry here, no broken symmetry here, no order parameter here, no order parameter here, but still, there are different phases. So we call it topological phase. And we say symmetry protected because symmetry is necessary to have a definite notion of phase. I mean, without symmetry, you can go from here to here, no phase. But with symmetry, you have a definite well-defined notion of phase. So this is symmetry protected topological phase, SPT phase. Okay, so here's the final, uh, a complete picture about symmetry protected topological phase uh, obtained by Gu Wen in 2009 and Paul Manterno Belk and Oshikawa in 2010. According to them, Haldane phase, uh, which includes AKLT model of a spin one chain, is in a non trivial symmetry protected topological phase protected by one of the three types of symmetry. So symmetry number one is the Z2 cross Z2 symmetry. That's it's the pi rotations about the three axis. Actually in part, part two of this lecture, I will mainly discuss this Z2 cross Z2 symmetry. Or symmetry number two is the uh, time reversal symmetry, very standard symmetry. Uh, symmetry number three is the bond centered reflection symmetry. So one of any one of these three will do. So I will concentrate on this one. In, in, in part two. Okay, so, and as I said, symmetry protected topological phases, F SPT phases are not characterized by an order parameter or symmetry breaking. And they are characterized by something called topological indices. So uh, this is the topic of part two of this lecture. Okay, so I think that's all what I wanted to say in this part one. Thank you for watching and see you in part two. Bye-bye.